I have a secret to share with you. Now it's not a magic secret, like how to make a playing card appear out of thin air, or how to take some $1 bills and magically turn them into 20s. In fact, this secret is not specifically magic related at all. It's something that you can apply to your own life, regardless of whether or not you're a magician. I won't wait until the end of the video to tell you the secret. I'll tell you right off the bat. It's being proactive. Sometimes in magic, the best secrets can be hidden in plain sight. And being proactive really is that kind of secret. It's something that we see over and over again in stories, in books, in movies. And yet, I think it's really undervalued and so, so important. When I was 14 years old, I had a New Year's resolution. I was going to focus on being proactive, on seeking out the opportunities that I found most exciting. I had remembered being with my family in Barnes & Noble and seeing that little story time stage. You know the stage where stories are told in the children's department? I would love to do a magic show there. So I reached out. I thought, why not go for it and give it a shot? So during my lunch recess time, I went out to the front yard of the school where there was a little gazebo because I was looking for a quiet place to make a phone call. And I had my first cell phone, which at the time was one of those flip phones. I think it had a green screen on it. I remember going out to this gazebo and making a call to the local community manager of this Barnes & Noble. I remember being nervous and excited and I called her and said, hi, I'm Jen Kramer. I'm 14 years old and I'm a magician and I would love to do a magic show on that story time stage in the children's department of your Barnes & Noble. Would this be possible? And she fortunately was open to it and said, come on in and we'll give it a try. And so I did a test show. I went into the store, I brought a little rolling suitcase, like one of those carry-on bags that you'd bring on a plane, and I filled it with all my magic props. I have my show ready to go. I wheeled my magic props into the Barnes & Noble. My parents took me to the Barnes & Noble, so thank you, Mom and Dad. I went there and did a show, and I volunteered to do it for free. After doing that show and volunteering to do a few more shows, she said, hey, this is going really well, and now we'll pay you to do it. And that became my first regular gig. So I started regularly performing at that Barnes & Noble and it led to other opportunities because I ended up meeting so many families who would be at the Barnes & Noble who would end up seeing my magic show and then would book me to perform magic at their kid's birthday party or their family event. And so that's how I ended up really filling my performance schedule on weekends as I was working through school as a magician. But that was an opportunity that wouldn't have fallen in my lap. I reached out and made it happen. I wasn't going to wait for the opportunity to come to me. I took an internship with Nathan Burton for two summers after my freshman and sophomore years of college. And it was such a great experience working with Nathan and with his team. They taught me so much about the Vegas showbiz world, about what it's really like to do a show in Las Vegas. The story of getting that magic internship with Nathan Burton was a story of being proactive, of going after what I really wanted. I had an inkling that Las Vegas was the place to be, to launch a full-time magic career, the place that I wanted to be. But I didn't know it well enough before taking that internship in Las Vegas. And with the help of a wonderful mentor that I had in magic, his name was Albert Lasher, and he led the Society of Young Magicians group that I was a part of. He was so supportive and helpful in making connections so that I could reach out to some of these headlining magicians in Las Vegas. And with my parents' wonderful encouragement to go for this thing that I love so much, I started reaching out to Las Vegas headliners and saying, hey, I would really love to spend the summer working and contributing to your team. So is that something that you might be interested in? Could we work this out and make it happen? I got a bunch of no's, but I got the one yes that mattered, the one yes that put me in the place I wanted to be, learning what I wanted to learn. And the yes that I got put me in Las Vegas with a great team, learning so much, contributing to the operations of the show and to promoting the show and the backstage work. During my 
junior and senior years of college from my dorm room in New Haven, Connecticut, I started reaching out to people in Las Vegas. Now, many of these were cold calls, cold emails, people I did not know, they did not know me. There was no personal connection there. It wasn't anything to take personally if they said no, but I was going to go for it. I was going to reach out to them and pitch my idea for a show and see if I could really make this thing that I love so much happen. And sure enough, I got a lot of no's. I ended up getting a lot of people who either didn't respond or said, hey, we've never done this before, we don't have the budget, or we don't have the space, or it's not something that we're up for right now. And that was okay, because all I needed was one yes. If I got one yes, it was a success. It didn't matter if I got 10 no's, or 20 no's, or 30, or 40, or 50 no's, did not matter. As long as I would persevere and keep going, as long as I could get that one yes, it was a win. One yes was all I needed. My goal at that time was to sit down in a room with the decision maker because I felt like my best shot at making this happen was if I could establish a personal connection with them, be in the same room. And there was one person who got back to me and said, okay, let's have a meeting. I flew out to Las Vegas during the spring break of my senior year of college and the meeting went really well. I demonstrated magic, I pitched my concept for a show, and by the end of that meeting, he said, okay, we've never done this before, but we'll give it a shot. So I knew when I moved out to Las Vegas that I had that one weekly show that I could count on. Every Wednesday night at seven o'clock, I knew I would be doing this show specifically for the hotel guests at this one property. And once we had a working model with that first show, I was able to go back to the properties that I was in discussions with and say, hey, it's working really well at this first property. Would you be open to giving it a shot now? And that really sealed the deal with that second property. And I started doing a second weekly show and about a month or two later started doing a third weekly show and ended up doing these shows for the next four years while I was also doing college shows and private parties and corporate events. Being proactive is one of the best things that I've ever learned and it's something that I continually remind myself of to this day as a guiding principle. Because of course, it's so much easier just to wait for opportunities to come to you. But if you really wanna build the kind of life that you love, that you're really excited about, go after those opportunities. It doesn't matter if you wanna be a magician, if you wanna be a drone pilot, if you wanna be a cook or an astronaut, whatever it is that you want, Go after it. This might be kind of meta, but that's why I'm creating videos for this YouTube channel. The YouTube channel that you are watching this video on right now. It's so important to me to be proactive. I enjoy creating content and I enjoy connecting with people even more. Whether it's at Westgate where I do my stage show here in Las Vegas, or whether it's through video content like this. I am so grateful that you are watching this video right now. I have some big things planned for this channel, so please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell to stay up to date when new videos are posted. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, you might like these videos right here. This one, for example, gives you a behind the scenes look at what it's like to be a headlining magician in Las Vegas. So please feel free to check that out. And until next time, stay magical.